Hello there, my name's Stephen Ball, and in this video, I'm going to be taking you through how the TREST request dataset adapter can be used to be able to push data from our client back to a RESTful server. Now, as part of this, I'm going to be exploring a unit of code that I've written, uh, a utility, uh, in essence, to help along the way, called the rest.dataupdata. And this is available on my GitHub uh, under the RAD server examples. So the sample I'm going to take you through here uses our, uh, a database table written in interbase here, which is just a list of tasks, it's a single table, uh, just to get the idea. Now that data is going to be exposed through a RAD server package, which has an endpoint of data tasks as the base URL for it. Now, using the TEMS dataset resource, we can expose the endpoints and then have those available as JSON to be able to call from any client from any programming language. On our client side, we're going to use the TREST response dataset adapter, which is going to be connected to our REST call and takes the responding data JSON data and takes an array and converts it into a T data set. Now we can then work with that T data set as we would any other data set from a local database. And then when we're done, we can then post the changes back, uh, or just say put, post or delete the changes um, using the REST request data set adapter. Now the T REST request data set adapter has a scope where you can define um, what you want to be looking at. Um, so, for example, we're going to use current, which is picking up the current record. Uh, and then that will post that back to the server. So here's our red server package that's been built just using the wizard going next, next, next. Uh, here we can see we've got our table with our data. And we can see here we've got the EMS dataset resource and then the allowed actions, which provide the, the different... Uh, endpoints to be able to call. So if we just have a quick look behind here, we can see this resource name has um, name data, which provides the first part of the URL. And then the TEMS dataset resource has the resource suffix of tasks, which then provides the data forward slash tasks endpoints that we're going to use. So if we spin that up, we can see here the methods that are exposed. So let's have a quick look at the client. So on the client side, we have a fetch operation, which is calling the rest request get dot execute. So here's the rest request get. Now this is calling data tasks endpoint, which gives us a list of all the records. It's connected to the client here, which is telling us the URL base for the, uh, the API that we're calling. We've got the response, which is populated after the request with the responding data. And then as that is populated, we have the response dataset adapter to convert that into a table. That table is then connected to the, to the items on screen. And we can see here we've got the cached updates enabled to true. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to track into the Delta property of the data set, any changes that are made. Now, once we've completed our changes, we have this TREST data set up data, which is the class that we've created in the, the GitHub repo, which is going to create based on an instance of the client. So where the base URL for the endpoint is the path to the resource that we want to use and then the ID of the fields in the table. So we know which ID parameter to use and then the table itself. And just by doing that, we can then call it and apply remote updates and that will then post those changes back to the remote server. So pretty, pretty simple from the code point. Let's dig in and see what the uh, class is doing. If you want to code it yourself and do something else. So under the constructor here, we can see that we are setting up uh, the endpoints that we're going to use. So if we go back here, we can see We've got the, the tasks ID for the, the get for the uh, the post, uh, sorry, for the put and the delete. The post, which is creating a new record, doesn't take the ID. If you um, want to make any changes to those, then obviously you can just update these properties on this object uh, at runtime. 
and we see here uh, it's just a case of changing the properties. Let's go back to the form. So once we've created it, we then call the reply remote updates. And this then comes through and just checks that everything's in place. And then it's creating a transport object, which has got the uh, rest request and the response that's going to be called for each um, call. And it's setting here if it's a, a post, a put or a delete method. And then it's then executing that based on what's been uh, kind of passed in. So if we have a quick look at the execute here, we can see that if the re method is a post put patch delete, it's um, filtering the data set to find the delta of what's changed. So it can find the inserted records, the modified and the deleted. And then it's calling the endpoint to uh, pass that data back to the remote server. So pretty straightforward. It's nicely wrapped up as saying here. And um, just to do that, if you want to kind of modify this yourself, you, you can do so. Um, but let's have a quick look at that in action. So our server's already running. Let's do the fetch. We can see the data's come back here. Uh, let's change this to uh, 42. And let's add in a new record here. And uh, we can call this one uh, Hello to you, and let's mark this as incomplete. If we have a look at the change count, we can see we've got two. We've got the record that we've modified and the inserted record. And if we save, and let's just refresh, we could see that we now have the ID fetched from the updated record that's just been inserted, uh, and off we go. And that's as simple as it is. So let's say, if you want to get hold of this unit, then please go to github.com forward slash delphiable forward slash rad server, and you can download the entire sample directly from there.